Hello, and thank you for joining us. It is a great day to be alive. We're ready to sit down one-on-one -on -one and have that conversation. Well, guess what? If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's talk. I'll be back. See you soon. Oh. September and if you know like I know love is the greatest commandment that Jesus has required of us it's not an option I'm telling you without love there is nothing my guest on today is Miss Audrey how do I even say your last name Brando and I love that because you have that Italian <laughs> New York accent along with that so why would I mess that up thank you so very much for oh, joining thank you. me thank you for oh having my me. goodness I just want to start off by simply transitioning and talking about this thing called love. Everyone wants to be loved, but what is love? What is love? Well, that is a, a tough question mm -hmm. to answer. Uh, I think love is giving of yourself yes. and accepting the person that you love. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, as we all know, that that is the simplest it is. answer. It is. Okay. Uh, I think it's very important that you always per put the person that you love first. Absolutely. Uh, I always used to say, my husband and I, he wants what I want and I want what he wants. As long as he's happy? Yes. Exactly. You know, and, um, but of course, life is difficult. Mm -hmm. Marriages are difficult. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many other things that are involved, whether it's, money yes. or jobs yes. or children yes. uh, I mean we all know that and many times we look for our jobs our careers money to really make us happy you know to make us feel loved but today we're here because you are a published author congratulations thank you thank you very uh, much I had the opportunity to go on Amazon download on the Kindle and read your book and I was in awe if I must say job well done well thank you and thank um, you I want much. to discuss with our viewing audience in regards to um, the unconditional love, you know, you simply said something that really stuck with me, that love is, you know, making that person happy, but what he desire, you desire. Just like our Father, God desires that we love on his people the way that he loves us. So unconditional love is an experience with you and your husband because you are a widow now. Please share more. Uh, yes, uh, Ray and I were married almost 39 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he passed away in 2003, uh, 10 days before our wedding anniversary. How was that for you? It was extremely difficult, mm -hmm. extremely difficult. I, I, I never experienced anything like that. Um, and it's, I, I, I would like to throw in that this past Friday, the 29th, would mm -hmm. have been our 50th wedding anniversary. Wow. And uh, so the 18th was the anniversary of his death, and the 29th was, would have been our 50th wedding anniversary. Now, you're sitting on set with me, full of life, full of joy. You're smiling. Now, there's someone that's watching that's going through that right now. They just lost their husband. Or they're still in the place 10 years ago of saying, I'm a widow, and I can't move forward. Just share. How did you move forward? How did you put one foot forward to say, okay, God, I trust you in this, in losing your husband? Well, first of all, it is very important that God is with us, mm -hmm. okay? I, I think when you have such extreme sorrow in your life, there's nothing else that can help you, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what I did was, let's say like our friends, you know, we belong to this group of friends and, mm -hmm. everything, and they would, of course, invite me to dinner. The, they would invite me to go to the movies and my first reaction was no, but I did go. Mm -hmm. I would cry on the way home, mm -hmm. but I made myself go. Why? Why did you choose to go? Because I felt 
life has to go on. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember I had, I had a child that passed away, and uh, my son was 15 at the time. And, uh, you know, like a couple of days after the funeral, he says, Mom, so-and-so invited me to go over. I said, sure, I'll go. Mm -hmm. I said, life goes on. Yeah. And I feel very fortunate that I have this desire in me absolutely uh, to be able to go on because I feel I not only help myself mm -hmm. but also my family absolutely I want to stop right there and really just take your hand and mm -hmm. just stress the audience right there someone who's lost a child who's lost a husband even a recent family member we want to touch and agree and just encourage you to get up you know life happens but one thing that I know and I'm sure you know this as well that the joy of the Lord is your strength Nehemiah 8 and 10 says it and that's what you tapped into that inner strength you know, we recently talked about that peace from within. You know, you had to find peace. How did you find that peace within yourself? In order to do that, I'm, I'm really not sure. I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you. Uh, but a couple of weeks ago, I, I shared in my, in my Sunday school. I, after Ray died, I really didn't go to church. And it wasn't because Ray died. All of a sudden, I did not feel comfortable mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. church. Okay? And I visited other churches, but it never hit home. Mm -hmm. All right? Then, like they say, God works in mysterious ways. Yes, he does. I never read the list of churches on Saturday's mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. Well, for one re for some reason, I decided to read the list. And uh, I'm looking at the Methodist churches, and I see Brother Don McCain. He was the one that did the service for Ray, my husband. And he was just amazing. And I called my daughter. I said, he still has a church because he had, he had cancer, stage mm -hmm. 4 cancer and everything. So I had no idea. And Andrea said, uh, Mom, if I was living in Tupelo, I would go. You have mm -hmm. to go. God knows how to order your steps to get you Absolutely. where you need to be. And, and you don't realize it mm -hmm. until way after, at least in my case. It Absolutely. takes me a while. I'm pretty dense. You Absolutely. Know, I think I'm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I walked in, and I've been going there mm -hmm. ever since. And what I shared with them in Sunday school was that ever since I've been going to this church, I am so much more at peace yeah. with myself. Yeah. So, because uh, I'm truly, it's a very small congregation, and I'm really surrounded by amazing people that really, Absolutely. really care. Wow. Two things I want to really point out to our audiences that you said, and correct me if I'm, you know, wrong, but the very first thing that you really do have to love yourself. Um, after death or whatever tragedy happens, you have to look within yourself and love yourself because life goes on. Yes. You can't die in that moment. Right. And, and then you have to, um, of course, accept what has happened and trust God. Did you find yourself trusting God more in those hard times? It was easier when I lost Wendy mm -hmm. because Ray was my support. Mm -hmm. He was there for me. Mm -hmm. This time it was me, myself, and I. Yeah. So it took a while. Yeah. Were it, you ever angry with God? No. It, and that is the strangest thing because I hear pe people, you know, are angry. And, uh, and I learned from losing Wendy that you don't ask why. Mm -hmm. Because if you ask why, first of all, you're never going to get an answer. <laughs> Second of all, it's going to literally drive you insane, mm -hmm. and and you're just going to hurt the people around you. Mm -hmm. And I just felt, uh, you know, I have to go on, and I have to trust that um, things will get better, that I'll be able to cope with this. Would you agree with this statement that God desires the best for us, even after death? Yeah, even after um, the loss financially, a job loss, or just anything that happens in life, does he desire the best for us? I believe he does. Mm -hmm. I don't always agree mm -hmm. with the way do he we does all? things. <laughs> but I, I feel myself, again, very fortunate that I'm truly able to believe that 
we should look at life with our cup half full, mm -hmm. not half empty. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at what you have, okay, then you say, well, then I can cope with everything else. I have been very fortunate, and I've said this through the years, that I always had a lot of love in my life. Mm -hmm. I had parents that loved me. Mm -hmm. I had a husband that adored me. I know my children and grandchildren love me. I have friends. So if you have that, you have everything. And you know what? I've learned this too, Miss Audrey. In order to um, give love, you have to have the love of God. Some people can't um, give you love because they've never received it, they've never had it, they've never experienced it. And many times we walk on a fence with others because he didn't do this. Well, they didn't, they have no idea what this thing called love is. So that's why we're going to come right back after this commercial break and we're going to talk about the unconditional love that you've talked about in your book. Is that okay with you? Sounds good. Well, before we go to commercial break, I want to take this opportunity right now to just extend my heart to yours and let you know that God loves you in spite of where you are what you're doing or what trial or tribulation is going your way and you're saying God you know what my hands are tied I'm done I'm turning away from the church believe me God has a plan and purpose for your life all you have to do is just say God I trust you believe me if I didn't know I wouldn't be able to tell you I'm a living witness that God will heal deliver and set free stay tuned we're going to be right back as we talk about this thing called love but what is unconditional love Hey, this is Rob at Grass TV. If this happens to you, bring that set on down here to Grass TV and let us take a look at it. I can fix it up for you reasonably or put you in one of these nice brand new LED TVs. Or if price is an issue, come check out Grass TV's selection of used and reconditioned TVs. And hey, we can also install your new DirecTV satellite system. We also offer free local setup and delivery, custom installations, and for anyone who mentions this ad, you'll get a 10% discount. Grass TV located on 917 South Gloucester Street in Tupelo. Hey everybody, I'm Ron Cotton. Welcome to 911 Minute, where we take a look at the culture and try to help you adjust to daily living through practical teaching. You know, when Judas betrayed Jesus in the garden, I find it so hard to believe that Jesus did not respond at all. Matter of fact, Judas kissed him and then the guards took him away. Have you ever thought about how God is teaching us through this message of betrayal? I believe that God is asking us one question. Do you love your Judas in your life? Really? How can I love someone that's turned their back on God and then turned their back on me? It's simple, my friend. It's not about you. It's about understanding that God's love is unconditional no matter what we have done. You may have a hard time doing that because of the hurt, but think about what our Savior experienced in the garden as he was kissed with betrayal. Thank you for watching 911 Minute on this station. And I pray that you've been empowered, uplifted, and inspired, totally thinking about this thing called love. Are you walking in love and unforgiveness? Or are you just doing your own thing and trying to figure out why God is not answering your prayer? Well, we're going to talk about unconditional love, which means that there are no stipulations. I love you just because I love you. Miss Audrey, you've experienced this. You are a widow, and we talked about that in the early segment. But you've had to walk the walk of um, unconditional love. Share more about your book. What is your, I guess, your favorite chapter? Oh, that's a rough one. Um, probably in the beginning when I met my husband, mm -hmm. uh, I was one of these girls that I was going to travel the world, not get married until I was 25, and I met my husband at 16. My. And... I took one look at him, and if he would have said, run away with me, I probably would have. So there was no attraction there in the beginning? Oh, no, not at all. God has a sense of humor. I'm, I'm 39 years of marriage, God has a sense of humor. He put the two of you together. Yes, absolutely. Met on a blind date, and uh, we're together from that day until he passed away. Oh, my. Yes, went through an awful lot together. Uh, we had three children, and... 
uh, we did lose a child. Mm -hmm. um, she was born severely brain damaged, and um, he was there for me for almost 13 years. Yeah, I could never have done it without him. Mm -hmm. It was extremely difficult because she was a very difficult child. Mm -hmm. But I don't know why, but that man ha hung in there. And uh, without him, I never could have done it. You know, what God joins together, the Bible says, let no man put us under, you know. Mm -hmm. But however, when there's a covenant, even when there's an opportunity to leave, like you said, I don't know how that man did it. When there's a covenant, he knows that we're together in this, and that's unconditional love. Yes. But I want to go back because you also showed unconditional love to your daughter. Um, as you said, she had she was born with a brain injury. Right. Uh, you didn't seek to, as some of the young mothers I see now when they have children with disabilities, they give it to the mother, the grandmother, or someone else. You took the opportunity to say, this is my child. I'm going to love this child unconditionally. How how were you feeling during that, that time of your life, different season of your life? We had Sean, who was uh, a little over two. Mm -hmm. we, we were in our glory with our little boy, and we wanted to have a playmate mm -hmm. for him. So Wendy was uh, supposed to be born a little over two years after he uh, after Sean. And uh, she had a cerebral hemorrhage at birth. And... She was born 10 days before my 24th birthday, so I want to emphasize the fact that I was very young. Very young. And after the initial shock, we were told that she probably wouldn't live for more than a month. Mm -hmm. And um, we fought. We just fought with, you know, taking How did you handle that as a mother? For a physician to say, you know what, she's not going to live, and they give you that timeline as a mother. Somehow I didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I was I was going to fight. I um, Every time we heard of a different doctor, uh, different things that we could do to help her, we would go there, and it was always the same story. I remember going to see one uh, neurosurgeon in Manhattan, mm -hmm. and uh, he's saying about putting her back in the hospital, doing all sorts of tests, and I said, oh, no. And Ray said, well, wait a minute, will this help my daughter? Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, no. And Ray got up and he said, my daughter's not a guinea pig. I love that. So it was always, yes, it was me, but he was right there. Mm -hmm. He was my strength. Mm -hmm. And And the other thing that helped me tremendously was Ray had the most fantastic sense of humor <laughs> and he always managed to find something to laugh about mm -hmm. and may sound crazy but that, that helped me tremendously no tremendously. it's not if, if no one's ever told you let me be the first every time you laugh statistically say um, that you add seven years Oh, to your really? Life. Oh, and and most people, I say, religious people, church people, we're so uh, like we've been sucking on prunes or lemons <laughs> that you have to learn to laugh. You sometimes yes. laugh at yourself. Oh, you yeah. have to learn to smile. Oh, I, lately I've been laughing at myself <laughs> a lot. <laughs> but it, it it actually is that energy from the inside out that once you start laughing, you actually start feeling better you about do. your situation. You do. Mm -hmm. I I remember, uh, you know, I started working well, Wendy's. To make a lot, you know, Wendy lived until she was almost 13. Oh, wow. And Amen. that's a blessing. Uh, but like my friend said, it was love mm -hmm. that kept her alive. Oh, yeah. And yet I had reached the point that all of a sudden I started to think, what's going to happen to her mm -hmm. when Ray and I get older? Mm -hmm. it, by then we, are, we also had Andrea, who was four. And what what's you know, I don't want to have that burden on my children and, and that. And I guess God saw what was happening. I started to actually feel guilty because I was taking so much away from my family. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming back from the funeral and saying to my friend, God, forgive me, but I feel like a weight has been lifted. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's exactly how you should feel mm -hmm. because you did everything you could. And, and I think that's what's helping me. I am so honest. Yeah. And I don't mind saying mm -hmm. 
you know, how I feel. Absolutely. And, and I think this is what's helped me through the years. You Absolutely. Know. You know, I, I believe when we're transparent and we're honest with God, then he can take our mess and make it into a message that he can take those trials and tribulations and make those, you know, into awesome and, and great testimonies. But right. the one thing that you said, you said, you know what, God, forgive me, but I feel like a burden has been lifted. Yes. Because you were thinking ahead. Okay, when we're older, how are we going to take care of this specific child? But God knows what's best for us at all times. All we have to do is trust him. And so years later, here you are with your testimony, your book about unconditional love. Have you received testimonies from people of how that book has Amazing. blessed them? Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, just recently, a lady at church who lost her husband uh, about two or three years ago mm -hmm. uh, came up to me and she said, your book is really helping me. Uh -huh. um, I've gotten letters, uh, phone calls. People read it and they're, they just, they said they can't put it down. Absolutely. They just can't put it down. And your response? Well, in the be I'm shocked. <laughs> I didn't think it was that interesting <laughs> yeah. because it's a work of love. It took me almost 10 years mm -hmm. to, you know, but you know how I knew this had to happen? I was maybe two or three years into the book, mm -hmm. and one morning I had a dream, and it was a very strange dream, and I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I said, this is the ending to my book, mm -hmm. and that's the ending to my book. Wow. That's the ending to my book. Wow. Well, I want to take this right now. It's, it's like a, a solemn of God. His presence is here. I want you to look into the camera right now and just share with someone who's lost a child, someone who's made, lost their husband, who was their strength, their backbone. I, I can't make it. I can hear, you know, a woman actually saying because he was the one that supplied the finances. You know, how do I live again? How do I move forward? Only you, Miss Audrey, can share with them at this appointed time. So if you would look into the camera and share with them, how do they move forward at this time in their life? Well, you have to trust God and you have to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. And you cannot give up. You cannot give up. And you have to just keep dreaming and try different things some you're gonna fall I've been falling a lot in the last mm -hmm. few years but I keep picking myself up mm -hmm. I refuse to give up and I'm still hoping that someday I'm gonna achieve all the dreams that I, I want to achieve I really do Wow thank you so very much for sharing that message I'm sure that someone's heart is being touched right now but I could never in this segment without sharing this your testimony in this simple I called it a random act of kindness you have a heart and passion for people I can tell that you love people I do and and so um, there's a, a special little boy who you actually prepare meals for um, share with us briefly because I just think that that is what love is all about unconditional love is being selfless and this is exactly what you're doing well I'm trying to start a business your dish is my command mm -hmm. and uh, I I want to help people I mean earn a living at the same time but I'm doing this uh, so I can help people too and this is a little boy who is brain injured mm -hmm. and uh, the mother is concentrating on him and mm -hmm. does not have the time mm -hmm. to cook so you've stepped so, in as an angel and uh, well I don't know if I'm an angel but mm -hmm. she asked me to help and I'm doing it and it's exciting and mm -hmm. I get to see him when I go there mm -hmm. yesterday I got to hold him for the first time and oh, he didn't complain mm -hmm. I mean he was laughing mm -hmm. and you know and uh, he seems to love my food <laughs> so that makes me even happier you absolutely. know so absolutely I'm very very grateful well again I want to thank you from my heart to yours our staff thank you so very much for coming just sitting on so on the set with us for the most part <laughs> to share with unconditional love what it looks like and then just letting us know that God is love and when you carry him with you all things will work together for your good. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, Thank guess what? So Our time is up. It has been truly an honor and a pleasure just having you as my audience on today. I want to encourage you to walk in love, love like none other. Live, laugh, and have fun because life is going to happen. It's not what you go through. It's what you do after you go through the storm. But I want to just simply say, peace be still. God is working things out on your behalf. All you have to do is simply trust him and know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Until then, be blessed.